Persona! The Persona series has become very near and dear to my heart over the past few years. My usual audience will know me for my Pokemon content, so for all you uninitiated, Persona is similarly a monster catching turn based JRPG following school age protagonists adventuring in a contemporary environment with a fantastical twist featuring an inspired set of creature designs. But it's so much more than that. The social sim elements, calendar structure and intense thematic and mythological coding have had me hooked for literally hundreds of hours. Like for real, these games are long. When I get really into something though, the gears in my head start to turn. It's only been a few months since Persona 3 Reload dropped and I'm already foaming at the mouth for the next installment in the series, thinking up possible mechanics and characters, all the little details and iterations that will be shaken up for the series' long awaited sixth entry. So while we wait for Atlas to show off where Persona is headed next, let's have a channel first stab at designing for another video game series and take a look at my concept for Persona 6. Modern Persona games follow a similar structure. A silent protagonist moves to a new school for the year and represents the fool on the fool's journey. They meet an easygoing male bro character and an initially standoffish female classmate before finding themselves fighting with personas, figures from across the collective human unconscious in some kind of alternate reality. As they mature and make connections with others, they grow to represent the fully realized world arcana at the journey's end and can understand the message of the game's main theme. We will explore and design all of these series staples, but I think the theme is where we should start. Persona 1 sets the groundwork for the series theme of personal growth and teenage coming of age, which Persona 2 carries through into adult coming of age, regret, and the power of words. Persona 3 gets much more concrete with the clear theme of death and making the most of the one life you're given. Persona 4 explores truth and seeing the person you really are, and Persona 5 explores rebellion, power, and societal complacency. If I was to summarize my idea for a theme into just one word, I think that theme would be belief. It's about the difference in beliefs between people, how beliefs are instilled in groups, and how beliefs affect those around you, debate, politics, and the world at large. Will differing opinions strengthen connections or shatter them? At what point does a disagreement become so fundamental that a bond will break? There's lots to explore. Religious beliefs, political beliefs, personal, societal, ideological, unconscious, biased, or a lack of belief at all, but I'm getting ahead of myself. First, we need to support this theme through gameplay. How are Personas summoned, and what is their unifying design theme? Persona 5's main character Personas were all representative of famous rebels from literature and history. Arsène Lupin was a gentleman thief from French literature, Captain Kidd was a mutinous pirate sailing the Caribbean, Robin Hood stole from the rich and gave to the poor. These characters embody rebellion against systems of power to a T, and I want to do something similar for the theme of belief. The obvious answer might be deities and gods, the ultimate form of complete faith and devotion, but Persona's first four entries already explored that to the point where it doesn't particularly excite me from a design viewpoint. Perhaps if I ever did awakened Personas it could work, but instead I want to explore something more contemporary that might even require more blind belief than gods themselves. Cryptid, a creature that is found in stories and that some people believe exist or say they've seen but has never been proved to be real. Mythical beasts and urban legends fall right in line with not only the theme of belief but the wider Persona series in general, with demons like Mothman being series regulars and cryptids being a worldwide cultural constant within the collective unconscious that Carl Jung describes. That's the psychologist whose teachings inform nearly all of the franchise's lore and systems by the way. Cryptids like Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, Wendigo, Jackalope, or Kraken are all fair game, although I'd like to explore more broad legends and ghost stories too. 
I want these visuals to really inform the setting of the game. I'll get more into it soon, but my idea is a small haunted town in the woods. A place like a Japanese version of the Pacific Northwest, with a culture of urban legends and stories of things that go bump in the night. Sort of like Gravity Falls meets Persona. This provides an easy way to summon these personas as well. Cryptid hunters head out into the woods to get one thing above all else, photographic evidence. So just as Makoto Yuki embraced the inevitability of death by shooting himself with the evoker, or as Joker tore off the mask of society's labels to rebel against those who put him down, this protagonist will substantiate their convictions and beliefs through the evidence snapped on their camera. Seeing is believing after all. Speaking of the protagonist, I think it's time we met them. For now, I'll only be designing a typical male persona protag, but if you guys want to see more from this concept, there's nothing in my narrative stopping me from adding a lady down the road. I'll also be drawing him in his otherworldly outfit, although more like Persona 4, it's not too different from his regular school clothes anyway, so you can probably figure out how he'd look outside of dungeons too. Let's go. Now, I'm just learning the Persona style, so I'm taking this project a little bit more sketchy and conceptual, just to get a proof of idea out there. You can see I'd already sketched a face in another document, but you'll see me play with its expressions as we progress. I set out for a very specific vibe, someone more unenthusiastic, similar to Makoto, with a slight hint of patheticness that can switch to badassery on a whim like Joker. For clothing, he's got goggles to get that ghost hunter aesthetic down. A sort of rustic steampunk if that makes sense, which I think the big coat really ties together. He has to look kitted out, but still be able to fight. Each character will have a personalised camera type to summon their personas, but for now, the protag just sticks with a basic DSLR. The flashlight is another vital piece of kit. I imagine it a bit like Luigi's Mansion, where you can stun shadows with the bright light to gain advantage. Character weapons would feel a little bit more impromptu for this entry, getting the feel of a ragtag bunch of kids who scrape together the crap out of their shed to fight shadows like an 80s adventure movie. The protagonist uses a nailed up baseball bat, which works as a classic all-rounder weapon for the MC. Next, I start on some colours. If you couldn't figure it out, this game's colour theme is green, perfect for a spooky woodland setting, so I try to reflect that in the design. I'm not really a fan though, so I settle on a sort of brownish burgundy, which is complementary to the green themes and fits in with his hair. Give me some official name suggestions in the comments. If there's one thing Persona fans love, it's to argue over canon protagonist names. I am thou, thou art I. Thou hast encountered a new perspective. It shall act as great benefit as you face forces beyond your belief. With the advent of the Fool Arcana, channel the blessings of conviction and command forth new power. This is your protagonist of Persona 6, representative of the Fool Arcana. He's an intelligent and talented young man, transferred to a prestigious new high school on a scholarship program. Despite this, he acts rather closed off to those around him, often in his own head and unable to understand the viewpoints of others. He also has a distinct lack of confidence in his own abilities, seeing his talents as unimportant and purposeless. In fact, it was only at the stern recommendation of his family that he agreed to transfer in the first place. That's about as much characterization as can be expected from Persona's protagonists. I like the idea that his scholarship was earned thanks to his photography talents, but that might stray slightly from the self-insert ability. Speaking of his scholarship, let's get a better idea of where this kid is headed for the year. This spooky town in the forest is known as Ginka Khan Valley. Nestled in the mountains, this sleepy place is plagued with whispers of mystery, strange disappearances, and beasts sighted in the haze. However, the townspeople have other issues on their mind. Overlooking the quaint town is the prestigious Ginkakan Valley International School, 
a modern institution where children of influential figures from all across the world come to study and network. I wanted to set this game in an international school for a few reasons. First off, I'm a stupid Brit whose only understanding of Japanese culture comes from his hundreds of hours spent playing Persona, which is to say, a limited source of experience. But also, cultural beliefs differ so much between countries, so having that worldwide clash of opinions all in one place will do wonders for what I can explore. The school's clifftop elevation is not subtle either. The disparity between the beliefs of the country folk and the ultra powerful will be a theme here as well. Finally, I wanted to get some serious variation in the scenery in the valley, particularly by fitting in plenty of mysterious environments where cryptids could lurk. Obviously we've got the forest, but the mountains, lake, farmland, and maybe even school could each house an urban legend of their own. Obviously this isn't the most detailed sketch of the setting, I'm not really an environment artist, but it's nice to be able to get a decent understanding of the layout. So, now we know where we are, let's meet some more of the cast. Moving into your new swanky dorm, you're posted up in a hallway reserved just for students on a scholarship. It's pretty empty, you guess they don't offer this to a ton of students. However, it does seem that the room next door has a resident. In a rare moment of opening up for the pro tag, you knock on the door and see who's there. Time for the bro character. Persona has a great set of repeated character archetypes. Who doesn't love getting to know your new best buddy for the rest of the game? I've grown to appreciate these guys over time, with Junpei being a strong contender for my favorite character in the whole franchise. I did want to take a slightly different approach with mine though. This character used to be that outgoing, fun guy back when he lived in America, but the change in cultural values after moving to Japan have sort of shot his confidence. That's what I'm trying to nail down here, that sheepish and less assured expression. Also, notably, having a cast from all around the world gives us the opportunity for a little more diversity, with Yuko, who I used as a reference, being the only real notable darker skinned character in the series. We don't talk about Mark. I tried to avoid giving him the dreaded Killmonger haircut that's in every game ever though. Annoyingly, I flip flop back and forth on whether I draw each character in their otherworldly outfit or normal clothes. Sorry for the inconsistency, but again, the styles wouldn't be too different, so I usually just draw whatever gets their character concept across best. This guy's concept is that of a jock character in a horror film, really playing into those American high school aesthetics for each party member. I tried fitting him with a varsity jacket over his uniform, but it looked a bit silly, so in the end I layered it over a hoodie, which turned out wonderfully. It took a bit to land on something, but I ended up loving this guy. He might be my favourite of the cast I've come up with. His broken rucksack adds to that bro charm, and oh, I also added his flip out camcorder in the pocket, which he can summon his persona with. I am thou, thou art I. Thou hast encountered a new perspective. It shall act as great benefit as you face forces beyond your belief. With the advent of the Hermit Archon, channel the blessings of conviction and command forth new power. Meet Kai Kato, your new best pal and representative of the Hermit Arcana. A star sportsman from the US, transferred on a scholarship to Ginkakan Valley International School. A popular standout people person in an individualist America, the collectivist cultural beliefs of Japan and status as a big fish in a now even bigger pond have left him deficit of attention, with the attention he does receive being for all the wrong reasons. In response, he has blended in and resigned himself to reclusivity. Will you be the one to break him out of his shell once again? A few notes on Kai. One big struggle I had was figuring out names for non-Japanese characters that didn't feel weird and out of place in Persona. Like I couldn't just name him Jason or something, it felt wrong. Kai is one of few culturally shared names and fit in well enough, so I ran with it. Kato as a surname is a little more of a reach to be American, but I'm sure you can forgive it. I also wanted to switch up the arcana for the opening few party members. It's pretty much always some combination of magician, chariot, or lovers. It's fun to change up their archetype while still adhering to broader personalities and party roles. Finally, Kai's weapon in the field would be a hand axe and he could even get a lumberjackish outfit there for reasons that will become evident. Despite this though, he's more built for speed than strength, and would throw the hand axe in combat rather than direct attacks. 
The two of you get on well and it seems you could be close, but Kai feels kind of hesitant and makes a polite excuse to retreat. The next day on your way to class though, you see him again. This time though, he seemed to be in a confrontation with some girl in the hall. Now it's time for our first female party member. This one goes out to all my Yukari haters who thought she was too mean. I'm gonna show you what a real mean girl is like. This is a very self-indulgent concept. I've mentioned my love of the mean girl trope before. Just a real catty, passive aggressive bully. They're always entertaining and it fits in the high school horror movie theme of the party. I'm trying to strike a balance between capturing that Americanized stereotype while making her feel like she could still be from Japan, since she won't be one of the foreigners in the party. This is another character with fun hair to draw, lots of fun flowy shapes and bunched curls like cinnamon buns, and of course her handbag and perched sunglasses are the clearest centerpieces to her mean girl aesthetic. Starting to get into some more fun camera types into the party here with a smartphone, fitting of her gossipy personality. I'm really beating around settling on a uniform for Pink Khan International, but to be fair, the other Persona games have their main cast really push the school dress code too, so the hot pink jacket will fit fine, even if it is an out there fashion statement. I am thou, thou art I. Thou hast encountered a new perspective. It shall act as great benefits as the face forces beyond your belief. The advent of the Empress Arcana. Channel the blessings of conviction and command forth new power. Bow down to Kamiko Ren of the Empress Arcana. Daughter of Japan's Prime Minister and ruler of Ginki Khan International's social circles with an iron fist. Followed by a clique of fame-hungry lackeys and a bigger entourage of romantic admirers, Kimiko's subjugation of the school's student body could be a reaction to her absent father and impeded relationship with her politically married Chinese mother, still residing in her home country, but she would never tell you that. Kimiko's catty and cruel personality is but one outlet for her ruthlessness, with a terrifying penchant for violence boiling beneath the surface, a trait that could prove quite risky, if effective, in the field. Alongside it though, you feel that, from on high, she looks down on the school she has sculpted with pride. Her plethora of extracurriculars show too that perhaps, somewhere deep in her soul, she has the talent for leadership and a genuine belief in Ginga Khan's community. Perhaps, with a whole JRPG's length of work, you could believe in her enough to coax it out. Not much else to say on Kamiko really, I think there's a lot of fun to be had writing for a party member so delightfully evil. It's like if we had third semester Akechi for the whole game. She'd develop and lighten up throughout the story, with a big turning point for her character taking place later in the game. This would split her social link in half, five links pre-redemption and five links post, similar to Yoshizawa. I think I'd structure all party links like this in fact taking the best of the narrative-based development from P3 and the link-based development from P4 and 5 and combining them. Kamiko remarks that Kai is a shut-in, attempting to snatch his phone gleefully as some girls snicker behind her. The altercation starts to get physical. You have no choice but to attempt to break it up. Trying to get between them, the fight is stopped by a teacher, dishing out detention to the three of you. Bitter after being knocked down a peg for the first time, Kamiko scorns you, clear intent to make your life hell, and trots off. Not the best start of the day, but you and Kai start to connect. In detention though, the tension between the three of you is cut by the late arrival of the detention attendant. Okay, here's a real curveball to the roster. We've got to have a starting navigator, and exactly how that works will become clear, but I wanted at least one adult party member to mix up the dynamic a little. I know how much Persona fans love their middle-aged men, so here's a real mess of a bloke right here. I want him to be goofy and over-enthusiastic, trying to rope the kids into his paranormal obsessions. The glasses and lab coat show he's a bit of a conspiracy nut, and he's based a bit on the AV club teacher from Stranger Things. Friendly with his students to a kind of cringeworthy degree, a truly nerdy man in the chair for the party went out fighting shadows. I am thou. The advent of the magician Arcana channel the blessings of conviction and command forth new power.
introducing Mr. Stevenson of the Magician Arcana, a 43-year-old child obsessed with cryptids, the paranormal, and all things spooky. A successful scientist from the UK, he now teaches biology at Ginkgo Khan Valley International School. Not for the money, but for the pursuit of the rumours in the area. As a devoted cryptozoologist, his greatest desire is to finally track down and study the inner workings of one of the valley's legends, meaning his eventual discovery of the shadows will bring him infinite excitement, if a little biological confusion. His other love is running the Paranormal Investigations Club, a student society with exactly one member. You'd have to be ridiculous to believe that he wouldn't use detention duty as an excuse to recruit some new members. Buzzing, he leads you into the janitor's closet labelled as Club Headquarters, with a complex computational setup shoved into the far end. He goes on a spiel about a disturbance in his readings, and sends the three of you into the forest just outside the village. With far, far less enthusiasm than the teacher, the three of you reluctantly trudge into the woods. Kamiko is comically disgusted by being with the two of you, one-sidedly bickering with Kai after he snickered at her getting scared. Eventually, she gets on his nerves and he trudges off by himself. You're powerless to keep the three of you together, but suddenly you hear a shout from Kai, but before you can get to him, you and Kamiko are surprised by a shadow. Enjoy this very rough animatic about how that goes down. Designing a persona is simultaneously so difficult and so easy at the same time. There's not a whole lot of things you can design that feel as if they could never be one, but to that same measure, it's hard to know when something is right, when everything you compare it to is so different. Regardless, I think this design feels closest to what I would deem a persona of my lot of designs. Being based on urban legends and cryptids, many of them will be quite animalistic, which is a little irregular for character personas outside of Cerberus, but this alien-inspired design gets that complex, almost human but not quite vibe down just right. I start off with this Jesus Christ Superstar type design that I really enjoy, but it feels a little bit bare in places, and doesn't fit very well with the heavily intricate designs of Persona. I do note down the UFO riding concept, however. Next up is the money idea, a hijacked astronaut suit taken over by a classic tentacled alien, which peeks out from behind the visor. The tentacle hair really makes it work, I think, as if the body is squeezed irregularly into a vessel not made for it. The body is futuristic and intricate, but still manages to use the spacesuit motif to fit in some more humanoid fashion that Personas often sport. Finally, I gave it the flag from the moon as a weapon, allowing it to wield something and display its role as a voyager. I cement this with one final pass, humanising the lower body of the design even more into legs and allowing it to ride the first designed spaceship. An unusually clean and rewarding design process, and a fusion of concepts fitting of the series and its systems. From the depths of your wandering soul surges Martian of the Fool Arcana. The archetypal alien visitor from Mars, every culture in the world whispers about sightings of this voyager from beyond the stars. Adrift in the cosmos, this Martian finds itself stranded on a little planet called Earth, a new visitor from another place just like you. The urban legend to end them all will be the one assisting you as you venture into this other world. Do you believe in aliens? The Martian is your starting persona in Persona 6. It may be weak, but it will be an important first step on your journey of individuation. As for what affinity it would use, I'm not entirely sure. Looking back on the whole SMT and Persona series' affinity history, the most fitting element seems to be gravity from Persona 1. Could actually be a lot of fun to bring back, but if we're going by Persona 5 rules, Nuke seems the best fit. Perhaps some type of reworked affinity that combines the two. It would learn a few simple debuffs and physical attacks naturally as well. Go nuts with them. You dispatch the Shadow, which is a cryptid known as the Skunk Ape, and would be common in the area. 
before radioing Mr. Stevenson in panic. He tells you to return, but Kai is still out there. Returning to the headquarters, your mission for the next month is clear. Save Kai from the forest before the month is up, or he will die at the hands of a murderous shadow. And that's the game's setup, for the first arc at least. Let's go a little more in depth about how it all works. This game's dungeons are known as lairs, sprawling open-ish areas featuring roaming shadows and navigational puzzles in mystical environments. These areas would reward stealth similarly to P5, but this time with more player agency. Bushes, dark cover behind trees, the hiding spaces will be fully diegetic and not just button prompts. We might need to infiltrate a cabin that's basement becomes a bunker mini dungeon, or maybe a campsite becomes a fortified base full of shadows, leading up to the inside of a giant tree that you'd have to scale to face the boss at the end. However, the main structure of each lair will be centered around the person at its core. You see, the lairs, as with many Persona dungeons, are the beliefs of people made manifest. It's kind of like a modern take on Persona 2's rumours coming true. The opinions of the public change places in the other world. If it's not clear, the forest is representative of the public's beliefs about Kai, a quiet, whispering wood full of places and secrets to hide, containing cryptids that lurk in the shadows rather than making direct attacks on people. The forest would contain a string of puzzles, enemies and places, metaphorical of Kai's personal struggles, leading up to a boss that represents Kai himself in the public's eye. You have to help him face the beliefs of the world, before they literally eat him alive. That's about as much story as I've got conceptualised. I'm sure you get how the game structure would work by now, it's fairly standard. But if you have any ideas about where you'd take the subsequent arcs, then I'm all ears. Luckily, we've still got some party members who need to awaken to their personas. So let's begin with the next in line to awaken, Kimiko. This design was pretty far outside my wheelhouse. I've always been a lot weaker at human characters, it's something I'm working on. So while this persona won't be a human entirely, getting those proportions on such a detailed design will be tough. This persona will be based on the Kuchisake Onna, a Japanese ghost story about a slit-mouthed woman, cut from ear to ear. Spooky stuff. I wanted to stylize her in a creative way, but I couldn't really land on anything. I pulled a lot more from the designs of Persona 4 for this one, using creepy masks and human faces that they often have. Eventually, I figured out this flip-up face idea with that, similar to Alexandrite from Steven Universe. The Venom-like undermouth walks that line between creepy and cool. My initial ideas involved a huge sun hat, but I ended up settling on a more traditional Japanese hairstyle that fit with the mask and is slicked back in a way that meshes well with the direction of the odd head shape. The clothes were a lot tougher. Modern interpretations of the Kuchisake Honor show her in a trench coat as opposed to a kimono, so I went with that. The over-designed bells and whistles of Persona costumes don't fit with my sensibilities of Pokemon design, which tend to reward simplification and visual problem solving, so I kind of had to force myself to add, add, add. Her weapon in the stories is a pair of scissors, which I'm able to play up and oversize for effect. I did end up kind of fudging the lower part of the design though. I tried to add in more scissor imagery, but it felt a little unconsidered. Perhaps with another pass I could get it, so let me know if you have any ideas on how to improve this one. Cutting through the fabric of Kamiko's heart is the Kuchisake Honor of the Empress Arcana, a malevolent figure from Japanese urban legends. The slit-mouthed woman was cut from ear to ear during her lifetime. Returning as a vengeful spirit, she approaches men, asking them if they believe she is beautiful. If they reply no, she will kill them with her weapon, but if they reply yes, she will disfigure their mouth to be just like hers. It is said the only way to survive an encounter with her is to describe her appearance as average. Since Kamiko and Kai have kind of swapped the personalities of typical Persona early party members, so will their Persona's affinities. Kuchisake Onna specialises in physical skills, particularly using blade and cutting moves. She also gets some bless skills too, although she acquires them later than most, starting out with insta-kill skills first off. Moving right along, let's see Kai's persona. This would be the reward he gets for facing down the manifestation of the public's beliefs about him, so it has to reflect some of his reclusive tendencies. The hide behind is a cryptid from American folklore known for stalking loggers from the shadows, concealing themselves behind trees before they can be seen every time. 
I knew this persona would incorporate the tree directly into the design, so I started with an ent-like beast that had interesting shapes but felt a little goofy and simple. Luckily, I think I really nailed it on my second go. Kai's struggles of identity, fitting in and hiding felt uniquely childlike in his case, so I felt a reflection of that would work. I designed this little forest spirit, which would appear curled up behind a tree, providing a vulnerability not often found in Persona designs. However, the tree provides its protection, a spooky deadwood which creeps, imposing, over the little sprite. It's almost like a tree mech suit for the hide behind. I kept the colours muted and grey at first, before overlaying a gradient, just to help sell the naturalistic elements and add some interest in terms of tint. This one turned out great, another favourite of mine from this project. For facing down the beliefs of the world, Kai awakens to hide behind of the Hermit Arcana. A creature from American folklore, the hide behind preys upon humans that wander the woods alone. Stories say it has the ability to conceal itself from view and cannot be looked at directly. The affinity is a little tricky for this one. It would be fairly magic focused to contrast Kamiko's physical based set, and I would most likely use wind or some kind of nature themed replacement for it. As a forest spirit though, it would also be a proficient healer, making Kai the dedicated early game healer archetype. All right, and there we have it, the early game party for my Persona 6 concept. I always love this initial staple trio, they always have such great chemistry, and I often miss the closeness of Makoto, Junpei, and Yukari, Yu, Yosuke, and Chie, and Joker, Ryuji, and An during the later stages of their respective games. Persona 2 Innocent Sin does well to keep that dynamic alive throughout. Of course, however, there's one staple party member I haven't explored that's been very prevalent in recent entries. This character would appear during the game's second arc, which I actually have a decent outline for. The first arc would explore cultural beliefs, specifically collectivist values in Japan that emphasise the wider population over the self and how that affects people. And this second arc would explore religious beliefs. It would take place on a mountain with a Buddhist temple and would contain a snowy and icy lair for the party to explore. And the party member for this lair will actually be the game's mascot. So let's take a look at the final party member to complete the quartet. My first rule for the game's mascot was to do something more like Koromaru than Teddy or Morgana, who I know isn't the mascot of Persona 3, but still. I don't even particularly dislike the more cartoony mascots, I just thought it would be fun for the Paranormal Investigations Club to be friends with a monkey. Like it can't talk or anything, but they just bring it to school and chill out together. Just seems like a concept ripe for typical Persona comedic hijinks. I picked a monkey specifically so I could use the Japanese macaque, the only primate species native to Japan. The design itself is fairly self-explanatory, so I'm just going to share some more relevant macaque facts over the speed paint. They engage in uniquely human behaviours and are known for their intelligence, washing food, bathing in hot springs, and rolling snowballs for fun. This also extends to their social hierarchy too, which is strictly enforced. Only the most important macaques can bathe in the springs, while the lowest class are banished into the snow. They live in groups, with males leaving the social circle before sexual maturity. Macaques also actually develop unique calls for their own social group too. They are also incredibly prevalent in culture and folklore, such as the Three Wise Monkeys or the Tale of Momotaro. All of these attributes contribute to the character of the macaque and make it a great pick for a party member. The Hierophant Arcana. Meet Momo Zaru of the Hierophant Arcana. Shunned out of the lowest ranks of macaque society, Momo Zaru was lost and hurt on the mountain all alone. That was until he was taken in by the Buddhist monks of the shrine and nursed back to health. He stayed with them there and became a monk monkey alongside them, growing a deep spirituality and appreciation for their practices. However, as the international school became established in Ginkgu Khan Valley and tourism increased, the once sacred site of the mountainside temple has been bombarded with foreigners and sightseers, desecrating their way of life. You first hear about Momozaru as the terror of the mountain, gossiped about around town. To combat the influx of tourists, he has taken to literally combating them, stealing their items and harassing them away. That is until people start disappearing for good, a mystery that Mo 
Momo Zaru reluctantly teams up with you to solve, as you venture into the mountain lair to find the cryptid snatching tourists and clear his name. Momo Zaru uses a disposable camera to summon his persona, something clearly stolen from the shrine visitors, and I think that adds a cute little touch to his design alongside some nice subtle storytelling. With it, he is able to summon his persona, who we shall meet right now. Alright, Momo Zaru's persona should be extremely easy to guess. I'm sure you've all kind of predicted it. Let's take a crack at designing the Yeti. This design honestly came to me very easily. The Yeti is actually an urban legend that originally gained traction in Tibetan Buddhist circles, where it was considered a non-human animal that was nonetheless human enough to sometimes be able to follow the Dharma. Several stories feature yetis becoming helpers and disciples to religious figures, which is a perfect reflection of Momo Zaru's character. I knew I wanted particularly to incorporate Buddhist imagery, patterning, and clothing into the design, just to give it that spin to separate it from other yeti depictions. I also decided to give it some mountainous shape language, sturdy at the toes and leading up to a pinhead. This pass was great, but I decided to give it a slightly more interesting angle for the final sketch. This is where it really came into its own, with some gradients and fur patterning getting added, just to really convey that persona detail that I often struggle to get down. This design really feels like a persona, with that spirituality and religious connection at the forefront, despite its more animalistic elements. For the finishing touch, I decide to give it a kakara, which is a type of staff Buddhist monks use to frighten away animals, and adds an air of wiseness to the yeti that really works. From the well of Momozaru's faith flurries Yeti of the Hierophant Arcana. An ape-like cryptid from the Himalayas, the Yeti, also known as the Abominable Snowman, is a legend born of Tibetan pre-Buddhists in the mountains. All that is seen of it today is its footprints in the snow, but stories once labelled it as a disciple of Buddhist figures and religious leaders. Of course, Momo Zaru and the Yeti would specialise in ice skills, although his actual battle niche is sort of tough. I could imagine him as an all-rounder, perhaps with some buffing skills too. Maybe he could have sort of middling attack stats, but early access to concentrate to reflect his meditative nature. And that, my friends, is all I've got for this Persona 6 concept video. I appreciate you all for checking this one out. Obviously, this isn't my usual content. For all the Persona fans here, I usually do Pokemon stuff. So if you're into that or just down to see me draw some more monsters, check out all my other videos. And for all my Pokemon fans who checked this one out anyway, I appreciate you heavy. I hope it was fun to see me apply some creature design skills to another game franchise. If you've got 80 plus hours to spare, please go play Persona. If you're anything like me, it will apply similar levels of brain rot to your mind as Pokemon, so it's worth it. Let me know if you enjoyed this video I'm hoping to branch out, so if you want to see other non-Pokemon stuff, more Persona, or even more from this concept, then tell me in the comments. I didn't even dive into the Velvet Room side of Persona 6, or make an attendant. I could do the Lair bosses too, the rest of the party and their Personas, maybe even some social links if you'd want to see it. Let me know your ideas on where you'd take this concept next. Any dungeon ideas? Shoot them down in the comments below. Special thanks to my patron, Lucas Gates, for helping me show off my passion to you guys on YouTube. I know I'm not the most regular poster, but I hope that passion shows every time I am able to make a video. Leave a like, subscribe, and definitely share this video with that one friend you have who won't shut up about Persona. I know you have one, okay? They'd love it. Send it now. Until next time, people. Ciao for now.